welcome back to the chat with us. It is time to talk about episode nine, the finale. We made it to the end. High five. High yes. five. Since we have Jake here, I think we should just get right into the, the video game comparison of it all. How did this last episode compare to like the last quote unquote episode of gameplay? It lines up pretty well. There are some small changes, for instance, the flashbang that lands in front of Joel and Ellie that causes them to get taken by the fireflies. That's different. Uh, initially, they almost drown and fireflies, quote unquote, save them from that. And there's some other small differences here and there, but as a whole, it sticks pretty close to the game. I mean, even mm -hmm. up to that very last scene. My best friend was there. That scene is almost word for word directly from the game. That's the last scene. I actually want to jump back to the first scene of the episode. The episode starts with us finding out how Ellie was born with a very pregnant Ellie's mom being chased by a stalker. And that Ellie's mom is played by Ashley Johnson, who yes. voices Ellie in the games. Ashley Johnson, who you all might remember if you're as old as me, as the little girl from Growing Pains. No way. Yeah. Really? Wow. She, you know how when sitcoms get old, they add in a new kid to like spice things up? Yeah. Ash, Ashley Johnson. I thought that was Leonardo DiCaprio. No, okay. Leonardo DiCaprio was the new homeless teenager that they added in to spice things up. <sighs> What's the other option? Obviously, Ashley Johnson is Ellie. If you've played the games, you've controlled Ellie for an insane amount of time. And to have her be Ellie's mom, it's just too good. I thought Bella Ramsey did an excellent performance, but I will always think of Ashley Johnson as Ellie because I've played those games so many times. But I also think it was just really cool seeing that story um, because Ellie hinted at it throughout the games and you never got to witness it. And I think seeing it in the show was, was neat. It adds a little bit more detail to that world that you know many of us are so attached to and interested in and fascinated by. They were able to include a lot of people from the games. Yeah. Obviously, mm -hmm. Merle Dandridge is the big one because like she plays her character still, and that's incredible. But I love that they gave such an important person to the franchise such an important role in the finale. And may, essentially... She is Ellie's mom. She created this character, like, out of her performance. So the basic gist of it is is that she gets bitten right as Ellie is born. <laughs> what horrible timing. A horrifying timing. But that it, that sort of gives the idea of, like, why yeah. Ellie is immune. Marlene is back. So speaking of Merle Dandridge, like, yeah. she is back. At the top of the episode, she's got a very, very crappy thing that she has to do. So Ellie's mom was a firefly. Yes. Or at least the start of the rebellion, at the start of the rebellion movement. And she seems that her and uh, her and Marlene are very close. Yes, they they said that they've been best friends since they were kids. Yes, Marlene is the one that finds her, realizes that Ellie's mom is about to kill herself, and instead she's like, "Take the baby." Like I cut the umbilical cord beforehand. The baby's not infected. You will protect the baby, and then you need to kill me. I can't do that. I genuinely thought I was like, "Oh my god, she's not gonna do it," and she's just gonna let her best friend from childhood wander as an infected. I can't even imagine having to make that choice. This is the first time I've ever bawled my eyes out in ADR, you know, when you go back and you and you loop. Um, and I watched this scene and I had to get past sobbing to be able to do the work. And then I was curious because the takes that they used were less emotional from Marlene. She was so much more pragmatic. There is a moment where she can't help but let the emotion rise up. Marlene! It's her final act of loving her friend. Marlene takes self, choosing her own heart, which is, I can't, I can't kill you. I can't, I, I, perhaps I can even find a cure in this moment, but I will not take your life um, to rising above and, and setting self aside as she does as the leader of the fireflies, as a leader of the resistance, as you know, uh, everything that she becomes in this post-apocalyptic world. And in this moment, setting self aside and giving, as you said, mercy to um, the dearest part of her heart. After that sort of flashback, we immediately come to present day. Joel's up and walking around after the trauma of episode eight. I want to talk about 
He's very clingy. Have you ever played this? Obviously, like, he and Ellie have just been through a thing. He almost lost her. He has fully accepted her as his he surrogate almost, daughter He now. almost lost her immediately after she almost lost him. That is two very traumatic events happening back to back. So like, yeah, he's clingy and I think that's okay. It was interesting to see like after spending so long of him being so frigid and Ellie being like, Leave Ellie me has alone. been clingy from we... the jump. And now Joel's like, do you do you want me to teach you to play guitar? Like, is that cool? Like, I, are you interested in this thing? And Ellie is still processing the trauma. Yeah. From so like, she's just like not present. Yeah, Ellie, like, Ellie isn't home. Distracted and him trying so hard to get the Ellie he remembers from reading joke books in the car and doing all these, and she's not there. Is that Joel from the video games at, th at this point, or, or is that something that maybe Pedro added into the show? A lot of those conversations, actually, the things he mentions are conversations had in the game, but they're a little more incidental, uh, meaning that you'll be exploring, you'll be wandering around collecting items, and Joel, Joel sees a guitar, I think, or you walk into a camper, and then there's a little conversation with him and Ellie about it. It feels less forced, maybe, well, all right. Jake, you mentioned the the word forced and in terms of like the guitar discussion and stuff like that. And I, I agree. It's very interesting having a TV show have to put these pieces of story into the plot. Whereas in a game, it would be like you walk over to the corner. You press the X button when you're standing in front of the guitar. Joel picks up the guitar and strums it for a second. He's like, hmm, hey, Ellie, blah, 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 guitar. Or documents. There's so many documents that you can mm -hmm. read in any freaking video game that give wild depth to the backstory that's not possible on a show. So, like, I, I don't know what the sort of, like, compromise is to make it not make, – make Joel not feel super clingy but also get across – I will say, like, he was super, like, I'm, that's not necessarily a complaint, right? right. I thought it was a, they're trying to make it very obvious of how their relationship has changed. And I think it was effective that, like, you, because it plays into what happens later. And that he used to say, like, you're not family, you're cargo. She's family now. Yes. And we very much understand that. And he's making that very clear. There was another scene in this episode that again, even as a non-game player was unavoidable. I was waiting for this because I didn't understand the context, which is Joel and these freaking giraffes, man. That is like, I <laughs> I knew that Joel had a thing with giraffes and I was like, how is this going to end up in the show? And then they showed up and I was like, oh, is this what everybody's talking about? So I'm I'm curious from you game players, how that, how that seeing the giraffes was that, did that feel great to you guys? It was fun for me just to see a giraffe in this world. That scene is probably one of the more powerful ones in the game, just considering everything they've been through, uh, everything that's happened, everything that's going to happen. It just feels like a nice moment in the game where you kind of catch your breath, reflect on the journey so far and move forward. And seeing that in the show, I, I thought was, was, was just as magical as I remember it. Um, you know, the first time I played it and I was actually just really impressed at how much that also matched the game. Like up to the point where when you got the reverse shot onto the balcony that they were standing on, it looked exactly the same as the game and the conversations they had were very mm -hmm. similar. I mean, it, down to Ellie's line, it can't all be for nothing. Like that that's all from the game. It still hit just as hard and, and it works just as well as it did in the video game. It's brief, but it's a nice moment of levity after horrible things happening left and right. It's like, okay, we just get a peaceful moment with the giraffes. Clearly things are going to get terrible again. So, so, so bad. It looks cool. It felt very cool. But to your point, things go south <laughs> yeah. immediately yeah. after that. So they Whew. find the fireflies. Mm -hmm. The fireflies find them. They knock out Joel. And when he wakes up, Marlene tells him something that we have all suspected. But basically that the way to find the cure they believe that the cordyceps have formed in Ellie's brain, and that's why she's immune. Yeah. And in order to replicate that, they have to remove the cordyceps from her brain, essentially killing Ellie. The first time I played the game, I did not see this coming. And it might just be that I like I am way too wishful of a thinker when it comes to things. I always want everybody to have the perfect happy ending, regardless of the story. I don't care. I just want everybody to be okay. So like part of me was like, oh yeah, they're gonna take some of her blood and then they're gonna they're gonna whip it up into a machine and like create a cure out of it. Not not even dawning on me in the moment it was like, well, they could have just taken her blood at the beginning of the game and bypassed all of this stuff. 
But now I, I, it's it's debate time because after this, Joel goes on a rampage yeah, and does. kills everyone in this hospital in order to save Ellie. Now that we're on it, Megan, since you haven't played the game, I'm curious like what your thoughts on that were. Great. Oh, boy. Jake, thanks for asking. Thanks <laughs> Jake, for asking. why would you do this to me? It works a lot better in the game, I think. Like, I felt more, uh, I guess attached to what Joel was going to do because I was doing it and I had just been on this journey with Ellie. In the That's show, true. I was a little more like, oh, this is this is worse <laughs> than I remember. I'm going to preface this with, I understand where he was coming from. I understand what Ellie means to him. That's not the issue. The issue is the entire world is at stake. And he That's unilaterally true. makes the decision that him having a relationship with this girl is more important than the entire world. I don't think the Fireflies were right for put it, like for killing her without telling her. I don't think that was the right move either. But Joel goes through this hospital. He shoots the doctor that has come up with this plan in the head. Yeah. So immediately I'm like, bro, hold him hostage. Force him to come up with another idea. Like... But there is shoot, no other idea. Once you shoot him in the head, I was like, well, that's the dude that understands this the best. We have, there's no possibility of an alternative solution now. While I agree with you, to a degree, uh, let me preface this by saying, Team Joel, there's no coming back for this world. This world is done. The way, the, literally, the way things are now in the world is literally the best it will ever be, regardless of what gets made. It's also, it's a twofold situation, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's him going through the hospital, killing everybody, getting Ellie. Before he leaves, Marlene is still alive and she's in the parking garage. And yep. she's like, wait a second, there's still time to fix this. And she then proposes that like, you should give Ellie the choice. I didn't give her the choice. You're not giving her, she should, and like that, that's actually, the, that's the correct move. Okay. out of both of them is that like Ellie should be told the truth and Ellie should get a say and maybe it is she wants like an extra year or whatever so the whole thing after that is that Joel straight up lies to her turns out there's a whole lot more like you and so she's now going along with this in ignorance and that was honestly that was even more egregious to me than the fact that he shot the doctor in the face the doctor the fact that he shot the doctor is horrifying him lying to Ellie and making her live in that lie, knowing that the rest of the world is going to suffer for it. That was like the, that was the one I was like, you know what? No. There is an interesting wrinkle here that uh, I think the game does that the show didn't really do, but in the game, you, the way Marlene tells you about this cure, it doesn't seem like a sure thing. It doesn't seem very certain. Yeah. Uh, they don't really seem like they know if it's going to work but they're willing to kill Ellie in order to try. And through that last section, as you're killing those people, you come across audio logs and documents of Marlene kind of like in panic about like whether or not this will work, whether or not it's worth risking the life of Ellie in order to save all these people. So I feel like in the game, there is a sense that like, okay, but from what I've heard, there is a slim chance that this is going to work anyway, but they are going to kill her, so I'm going to save her. I feel like in the show, Marlene yeah. walks up and says, we can save the world, this is how, we need to kill her first, and uh, it's gonna happen. So I feel like there's some ambiguity that is kind of left at the door, which I wouldn't say bums me out, but kind of changes the context of that final sequence. Obviously, at, at, Joel is yeah. still a bad guy, no, no matter how you want to look at it, but mm. but I do look. I, I'm I'm a big Joel defender. I, I love Joel. I think he's a great character. Um, but like, I see you wearing your Joel costume right now. Kind of, yeah. If only I got one of those <laughs> one of <Yeah>. those uh, <laughs> jackets. Um, but yeah, I, I I I'm a little bummed that the show didn't kind of delve into the uncertainty of it. And now maybe mm. that was just to make the audience care less about Joel or, or maybe not care less about Joel, but feel more frustrated with Joel. That would have made me, had it been like, oh, there's like a f five to 10% chance that this works. And I was like, okay, yeah, then no, I would have a lot, I would relate in a lot more to Joel. They do present it in the show as someone who hasn't played the game as like, this is the cure. We're like pretty damn sure <laughs> that this works. But another person whose perspective we also want on this is, again, we talked to Emerald Dandridge, uh, and we want to hear from her about that, that final scene with her and Joel and 
Oh, I wonder whose side Marlene is on. If there was someone that I loved in the in harm's way, I would do everything in my power to keep them safe, to protect them from harm's way. Fortunately, I'm not making those kinds of grand decisions for the sake of humanity. My goodness. But would you sacrifice that? I mean, those that's a that's a biblical kind of question. You know, it is so large in scope that it's uh it's overwhelming to even consider. So would Merle, I I could I could not even put my mind to consider. But if you just keep going, you find something new to fight for. This final scene is Joel reiterating the lie. I feel like in the game, Ellie knows that Joel's lying to her. I've always assumed that Ellie knew Joel was lying to her about that. Yeah, it's unsaid. I feel like when I play through that game, the understanding I get is that, yeah, Ellie knows he's lying, but right now Ellie is willing to accept the lie if that means life for her and Joel will sort of go back to normal. And, you know, yeah, the, there's a lot more to that, uh, that, that conversation that kind of escalates in two, but um, we'll, we'll have to save that for, for another discussion. I will also say in that scene on the hill, Bella talking to Pedro, I also thought Ellie knew he was lying. Yeah. She's like, look, I have to do this before we go back and we build whatever this life is going to be. Like, I just, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to take your answer for what it is and that's it. She asked him to swear and he swears on it. Yeah, she knows. She, she knows. absolutely knows. Come on. I look at this from a point of view of Joel who cradled his daughter in his arms while she died. Everyone he's loved or cared about or even liked has died. He has spent 20 years, as Tommy points out, closed off to everyone. Even Tess did not get as close to him as she wanted to be. Uh, so after 20 years, Ellie is the singular person who has been able to get to Joel in a real way. And then he finds out, he hears from Marlene that like, she's going to be taken away. He doesn't even get to say goodbye. Yeah. Like that, and I, I, so I get the emotional response. It is just like the repercussions for his actions Absolutely. have devastating means globally. I don't know what the perfect solution is. I know that Joel's solution wasn't it, man. Well, and I think that's, that's the thing. There isn't a perfect solution. There is no way that this is going to go that serves everyone. It's just not the case. I understand people being mad about it, but like, at, I'd like to think I would make the right decision in that moment. I don't know that I would know what the right decision is, and I would want to act in such a way that like preserves the people most important to me. I think also is that like the way that this show and like the fact that it ends at the point that it does end is that like we have no insight into what Joel's plan is from here on out. Like, what is he going to do with this knowledge? Because like. Is he going to try and find a different doctor to try and figure something out? Or is he just going to hold this child in middle of nowhere, Wyoming? I hope season two is just Joel wearing a lab coat, like trying to invent his own cure. You know what I mean? Like, is like that's that's also the thing is like, is he just going to sit on this information and bury it with him so that she lives yeah. out the light and then like, that's it? Or like, is he going to be like, we maybe we can try and figure out something different, man. I don't think because Joel again the world it. the world is at stake. Having this discussion is weird considering part two exists. <laughs> at the time playing the game, I remember being super conflicted with Joel's decisions, but at the end of the day, I fully supported him because I played through that. The connection that you get between Joel and Ellie when you're actually playing as Joel, she'll pull out her joke book every now and then while you're playing the game and she'll read jokes. And there's just a lot more incidental stuff between the two yeah. of them that just makes that relationship even stronger, I would say. The show definitely made me think differently, I think, in terms of hmm. like what I would do because of how black and white the solution kind of seems to be. At least that's the way that um, Marlene kind of painted it. He thinks it could be a cure, Joel. We'll dig into a little bit of what we think season two will look like uh, shortly. But before that, it's yeah. time for Megan's Nightmare Scene of the Week. Right after so much debate, at least now there's something we can all agree on. Which is this the show is messed up, man. It is Megan's Nightmare Scene of the Week, which it could be nothing else but the top of this episode when Ellie's mom is hanging out in this house and homegirl stalker comes mm. crawl running over to her through that door. Again, uh. I don't like contortionist 
supernatural creatures. Did you have you have you enjoyed the different types of infected we've met this season, Jake? Yes, I have. I think my favorite one though has to be episode five when Ellie's in the car and that little girl clicker yeah. rolls in and starts rolling around. And I was like, I've never I seen needed... one of those move like that. And I never want to see a move like that again. I hated every second of it. Terrible. You know what I, you know what I didn't hate, What's Chris? That? Was every time Ellie gave us a big curse. Oh. However, yeah. this is the one episode in the entire Ellie's curse season. of the week is from a different Ellie. This is the one episode where Ellie doesn't curse. In fact, it's actually Ashley Johnson as Ellie's mom, AKA original Ellie. It's right after Ellie's born and the little baby is crying and her mom says, That is another, uh, another reason I'm so glad Ashley Johnson got to be in this role. It's not sarcastic, it's not nothing, it's just right. And it brings me much joy. Honestly, and a great way to wrap up the first of what will hopefully be many, many seasons of this show. I hope so. If they only do two seasons, I, I don't think anybody at Warner Brothers wants to do just two seasons because they're going to massive hit this is. But yeah. like also or like, HBO. Yeah. So this is a great question for you guys, because this first season covers the entirety of the first game. What do they do for season two if it is not The Last of Us part two? I think they split part two into two seasons. Um, I won't oh. say why, because I don't want to spoil it. But the way that game is structured, I think it makes sense to have two different seasons with, with with different tones maybe okay to make it work i'm trying to be as vague as possible i am i'm definitely not opposed to that um correct my math if i'm wrong jake part two is set four years after part one that sounds right i believe like so three like three to four ish i'm not saying we need to know everything that happened in those four years but like i would really love a season, maybe two seasons of like the in between. Because I think the fact that Neil Druckmann, who is the writer of the games, is so heavily involved in the writing of this show, I'm really interested in what that could mean. And honestly, it's selfish. I just want more seasons of this show. I don't want to run headfirst into uh, uh, game two because even beyond what we see in the game, there's still so much happening in this world. And I think as they're integrating themselves into the Wyoming uh, settlement and dealing with the other things of the world. I think there's a lot of story that could be told if Craig and Neil choose to go that route. And my fingers are crossed. I will say that so like, as angry as I was at this finale, it was not an anger at quality in any means. Yep. A first season of such quality that is so rare in television. Like this, like it hits all of the boxes, but like yeah. it's filmed beautifully, it's acted beautifully, it's written beautifully. The overall quality of this season has been such a treasure to behold. And I think that HBO would be crazy not to see how long they see can make how it long go. They can make it go. Again, don't like milk it so that it's, we're sick of it by the end. But like at this, like I think it would be stupid to only do two seasons when you could do three or four. I don't think it's been announced or is in any sort of active development, but like they haven't completely shut the door on more games, have they, Jake? No, I, I I don't know if they're working on any. I kind of don't think they are, but Naughty Dog, I, I think, has said they're interested in continuing uh, The yeah. Last of Us franchise. And I know, I mean, they do have the multiplayer component, which is supposed to come oh, out yeah. sometime in the next couple of years, which normally, uh, you know, multiplayer is one thing, but Druckmann has gone on record to say a couple of times that this is going to be more story focused. I don't know, entirely know what that means, but... I mean, maybe there's 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 threads there that could be translated into another season of some sort. Yeah, because I believe they said from the jump they will not go beyond what has happened in the game. So like they're not gonna do, they're not gonna have a TV season sequel to the second game. But hey, there's plenty of in between time. I'm just I'm just saying. And, and spinoffs are always a thing too. There's like the beginning of the Firefly movement. Ooh. All of those things. And I think that's, you wait for after season two, but like there there are things that you could do within this world that have not been explored yet. I think doing a, a season of Kathleen's brother and the Kansas City Rebellion is possible. Bring back, like if you can hire Melanie Linsky, why wouldn't you hire Melanie Linsky? I'd like a quiet romantic drama about Frank and Bill. I want what I want and that's, that's all I can handle. Welcome to co-hosting a show with Chris Hainer. I do think to your point, Chris, that, uh, within uh, Last of Us Part Two, I think there are a lot of smaller stories that flashbacks that they could expand on quite a bit. 
Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if I'd want them to be stretching out the events of Last of Us Part Two as long as possible. But I, I do think there's room to kind of touch on some of the newer characters that are introduced that don't get that don't get quite enough um, um, screen time in the game. I, I think one of the issues people had with two is that you didn't spend enough time with certain characters, and that made certain events. I agree. I know what he's talking about, and I agree. I don't know what he's talking about, but I have, based on the way that episode one has expanded upon things that we have heard are, are not big deals in the game, I fully trust them to do that. And I, I, I those have been the most interesting episodes to me as a non-player. Uh, and I would be interested to see that more in season two because of, of the characters that I've heard that are in part two. Yeah. As we start to sort of wrap up, uh, I just want to check the temperature of the room because I know you're not a gamer, Meg. Uh, Jake, best video game adaptation ever? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, undoubtedly. I, there's, I've got a soft place in my heart for some of these bad video game adaptations like the Look, Doom we movie. all love Mortal Kombat Annihilation. And That's the just Mortal the Mortal Kombat movie. But uh, as live action goes, this is, this is about as good as we've gotten. As good as we, I don't want to curse it, but might ever get. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't think of a franchise that, at least a current franchise, uh, Chris Pratt's uh, I'm assuming stellar turn is Super Mario notwithstanding. I can't think of another video game franchise that would that would be able to transfer so well and so easily to the live action format. Meg, I know you don't play a bunch of games, but you've seen a bunch of video game shows and movies. I'm assuming you've seen at least one Sonic the Hedgehog film. Yes. Where where does this rank in terms of movies you've seen movies and shows you've seen that are based on video games? Nothing has compared to The Last of Us, but I mean like I even go back to like the Tomb Raider movies. And like Which those, ones? Like, like the Angelina, the Angelina Jolie, Jolie one? and the Alicia Vikander one. Like, I also felt like most of the time when I'm watching a video game adaptation, it feels, I was like, this was made for fans of the video game, right? It feels a lot less accessible. And I feel like The Last of Us presented very solid arguments. People like me, like I was so deeply invested throughout this entire season, even without the gameplay. This could have easily not been very good. It takes one bad piece of casting. It takes, what honestly, it just takes one bad, not great episode or another writer brought into the room that doesn't vibe well with Craig and with Neil. There are so many ways this could have just died. And instead it's fantastic. And on that note, that brings us to the end of oh. the last episode of The Chat With Us. Thank you guys so much for hanging out this whole season. Thank you, Jake Decker, Thank for joining Jake. us. And we'll see we you in see season two, buddy. We'll see you in season Can't two wait. and in the comments and uh, likes. See you later.